power. Let's go. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is my Lord to the glory of God the Father. Thank you. You can have your seat. So, Karibuni Sana, and I thank you so much. So, next time uh, we are young people, I want us to come early. Eh? Sour. To school time, we are Neno. Uh, let's not come late. I want to encourage you that you have that uh, energy, you have that strength, you're still young, we do not have anything to do so much in the morning, you just wake up and come to the house of the Lord. I don't know where to start because right now my time is far spent, we have only like uh, 15 minutes or 14 minutes and they will be done. But uh, my topic, you see like uh, I was told to come to minister to you guys. Eh? Uh, I was looking at what I can uh, speak to you, and uh, the Holy Spirit of God took me somewhere, and He told me to come. I speak to you about finding your purpose in God's plan by grace. Finding your purpose in God's plan by grace. I want to start to say that. Uh, each and every one of us is in God's plan. When God created you, He had you in His mind. Which means that uh, we have a purpose of living. So everybody has a purpose. There is nobody who can say that there is nothing they can do in this world. If in marketplace there is something that you are doing, it will be very much easier for you even to do God's work. But if in marketplace there is nothing that you are doing, it will be very difficult for you to serve. So, don't just sit. Or maybe don't just say that there are somebody else who is doing what is supposed to be done in church. We have a mandate to serve God. There are people who just maybe sit. They don't do anything else outside there. They don't do anything in the marketplace. They have not gone an extra mile to find something to do. That implicates the same thing. When you come into the house of God, you see people seated. Simply because what you've been used to do outside there, you bring it here. But I encourage you that you do something in the house of God. God had you in his plan, and he created you with a purpose. And that purpose, you are not supposed to sit on it. You are supposed to do something in the house of God. I want us to read a scripture in the book of Jeremiah 29, 11. And I believe we all know what it says. But I've come to remind you that there's something that you can do in the house of God. We are not just maybe created to come and just sit. If uh, the screens are ready, we can be display that scripture. It will be our main scripture in the topic that I'm speaking to. Or if it is not ready, I can read. Eh? For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and a note of evil to give you a future and a hope. God here says that he has plans for you, not even one. But as we have not come to that space of taking what God has given unto us, it's not good that you just come to church and sit. There is something that you, are, you can do in the house of God. Your purpose, God has it in his thought, in his plans. It's only for you to seek God, to know what you are supposed to do, in his house, all of us, minus none, we have a purpose in our lives. And as young people, this is a time that we are supposed to be very active. Why? Because we have the strength. Paul says, I write to you, young people, because you have the strength. You have overcome the evil one. And the word of God abides in you. This is a time that we are supposed to serve God. Not unless now it comes a time when you see that I do not have that time. Or maybe my energy is gone. 
So Paul is encouraging us this morning that we have that strength. We have overcome the evil one and the word of God abides in us. So there's nobody here who can tell me there's nothing that I can do. You need an intimate relationship with God so that you can go and seek the purpose that God created you for. And one thing I want to encourage you this morning, in the book of uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 9, if you can be displayed there, understand that your purpose was ordained before the time began. And the grace is there to take you through that purpose. This verse encourages us that who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us, Jesus, before time began. We started by saying, finding our purpose in God's plan by grace. This purpose is attached to your grace. Each and every one of us has been given a measure of grace. So, God cannot give you something to do that uh, he has not given you the grace to bear or to do it through. Because he cannot give you something that you are scared of or maybe you cannot accomplish. But everything that God has ordained in your life, just know that there is grace, sufficient grace for you to perform the task. So now this calls for us to align ourselves in God's plan. But unfortunately, sometimes we find ourselves living unfulfilled lives. Why? Because we are neither here, we are neither there, we are just there, here and there. Some people say that, oh, I'm not able, oh, somebody else can do it better than me, oh, I think there are some other guys who can do it. No. Let us align ourselves in God's purpose. And uh, now, in this uh, purpose, eh, there are some times that we feel it's like, oh, it's too difficult for me. Or maybe I don't know what God has called me for. Sometimes these unfulfilled things that we do in our lives, they try to make us deviate us from the purpose of God. And uh, we find ourselves doing the things that God has not called us for, or they are not helping us in any way in our lives. Sometimes we have a great deposit in us, but we waste so much time doing some other things that are not helpful in any way. That takes us, our minds away from God, or from the, way, from the purpose or the plan that God has for us. We have that potential in us, but we use it in a wrong way. Am I speaking to somebody? Yes. Young people, I'm speaking to you. You see, uh, I was just maybe contemplating on the message that I can come and speak to you that we may understand each other. Because now, this is your foundation. If you mess it, you will take another longer time for you to amend it. So it's always good, at least, we, we, we build that strong foundation so that at least you are not going to waste a lot of time there, not finding the way. But we need to do it right now, so that you can have that strong foundation. You do the right things, and then be in God's plan. So just know that God has you in his plan. It's for you to align yourself. God has never deviated from his way or from his plan, but most of the times we do. That's why I'm here to tell you that you are in God's plans. Don't go to your own plans. This is a, a, the same thing that Saul found himself in, persecuting the church of God. Yet his calling was higher than that. Praise the Lord. Saul before he became Saul, no, sorry, Saul before he became Paul. He persecuted the people of the way. Yet God had plans for him. To make people follow this way, he was either in people following. He met with Jesus, and that one changed his life completely. So sometimes you may feel it's not easy, or you want to give up in your calling. 
But the truth is, the grace of God will take you where nothing else can take you. The grace of God is there. You are not alone. If you feel that you are not able, the grace is sufficient. So uh, very quickly, because of our time, I just want us, I give you some few points. I have only five minutes. Eh? <laughs> I just want to give you some few points that will help you to find your purpose in God's plan. Amen? And then number one, understand God's purpose for your life. Psalms 57 and verse 2. You need to know God is God. And he works all things, including your life, according to his purposes. Nothing can happen without God ordaining it. Individually, sometimes, we need to have that intimate relationship with God. So that we may seek him. We align ourselves in God's plan. I will cry out to God most high, to God who performs all things for me. Just imagine. It's for you just maybe to align yourself. God has done it for you. Everything God has performed it for you. He has ordained it for you. Actually, your purpose, you need to look it into the word of God. Or you need to have that intimate relationship with God so that you may align yourself in God's plan for your purpose. Number two, embrace your unique gifts and the talents. Every one of us here has a gift, or maybe we have talents. I am so glad that there are, so, there are some young guys here. Eh? You see them dancing there every, every Sunday. That's something that you, they are doing for the God's uh, work in the kingdom. Embrace your unique gifts and the talents. Romans 12, 6 to 8. Just know that your purpose, no one can do it. What God has deposited in your life is so unique that there is nobody else who can do it. I don't know whether you have heard me. Umeniskia. Hello, tuko pamoja. Mary, umeniskia. You have a unique deposit in your life that it's only you can do it. Don't do it for anybody else to do it. Young people, we were there. That's why we are encouraging you. And we utilized our time very well. Or maybe if we did not, at least in some way, along the way, we found a right way to align ourselves. So I'm here to tell you and encourage you that. That's something God has put in you. That unique thing that is in you. There is nobody else who can do it the way you can do it. It's only you who can do it. So why are you sitting on it? I charge you today, I charge you this morning, kindly do it, because it's in it, in the body of Christ. You are that thread, that cannot, that to connect and even unite the body of Christ. Because if you are the figure and you can perform well the function of a figure and you are not performing, then now the whole body is suffering. Why do you want to let the whole body of Christ to suffer while you can still do it? I charge you this morning, kindly, God has deposited something very unique in you. And it's only you who can perform it. So there's nobody who is going to accomplish what God has deposited in you. I charge you to excel in your talents. If he's singing, sing. If he's dancing, dance. If he's serving, serve. If it's in other, any other gift, kindly do it. Did we read uh, Romans? Having the gifts of uh, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. And imagine grace is there. This purpose is attached to what? To grace. Grace is there to take you through your purpose. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Let us use them. In prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Mm -hmm. Verse 7. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He will teach us in teaching. Verse 8. 
He will exalt in exhortation. He will give with liberality. He will lead with diligence. He will show mercy with cheerfulness. There. The Bible is very clear. Where you are calling is. So. Okay. Where you are calling is kindly excel in that. Then number three, because of time, seek God's guidance through prayer. See God's guidance through prayer. Trust in God and lean on to your own understanding. Do it in God's word. Do not allow the worldly things to come in between your purpose. You see, there are some guys, and we have seen them in the world. They do what they do, not in godly manner. But I encourage you kindly, if God has called you in a certain field, do it in a godly manner. Usijitanganya, tumelewa, na usifanye na werefu wako. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Trust in God and learn lean on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord. Yes, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. Even in your calling. In your purpose. God will direct you. Trust in him. Do not do it on your own strength. Or on your own mind. Or wisdom. But trust in Lord. Then now the last one. And we finish. Make a positive impact on the world. The Bible says the creation is eagerly waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. That is Romans 8, 19. Eh? You have a deposit in you which is just but waiting to explode and impact the world positively. Do not sit on it. Here the Bible says that for the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Actually, there is a way that you can do to impact your generation. In the generation that you are living in, they are waiting for that deposit God has given unto you. And imagine you are sitting on it. Or maybe if you are doing it, you are not doing it to maximum. I charge you this morning, do it fully. There is a great deposit. Kuna mtu wanangojia tu ufanye kitu yenye mungu ameka ndani yako na abarikiwe. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Kuna kitu tu mtu ameka, uh, uh, mungu ameka ndani yako. And there is somebody who is waiting for you to do it. At least they find their way. Ama wabarikiwe. You can impact your generation positively. Kindly don't do sit on it. That deposit God has uh, deposited in your life. The generation is waiting. Kuna generation inangotia, you impact it. And the last thing I want to say is that David served uh, his generation that is the book of Acts 13 and 36 I like it well, the way it says that David served the purpose of God in his generation we can imitate eh? for David after he had served his own generation by the will of God fell asleep was buried with his fathers and saw corruption so I want to encourage you you have a purpose and the world and the generation is waiting for you to manifest what God has deposited in you. I came this morning to encourage you. Do not sit. You have something to do. A great thing that is in you. God created you uniquely. He did not create you the way he created me. That's why we are different members performing different functions. But being united together to unify the body of Christ. So young people uh, this morning, kindly be encouraged. I charge you, what is in you, don't sit on it. Perform it. Do it. Be in service. Serve God. Because at the end of it all, we were created to serve. We were saved to serve. Don't sit. God bless you so much and have a wonderful week. Thank you.